morning, Danny. It's September 5th. Ebola has been a thing in the news lately, and it's probably because it's so freaking terrifying. But some, if not all, of that hype is a little unfounded. Yes, Ebola is one of those terrifying diseases that we happen to have no cure for. But it's not as widespread as all the other terrible diseases like malaria or some of the other syndromes like AIDS. We also don't happen to have cures for malaria and AIDS, and yet we're not freaking out about them as much. It's probably partly to do with how they're transmitted. It's an awful lot harder to get AIDS than it is to get something like the flu. But the other reason may be because while we can't actually cure those things, we do have methods of treatment that we can use to help those people with those ailments. And someone that we have to thank for that is Gertrude Elion, today's Female Scientist Friday. You like how I did that segue? Born in New York City in 1918, Gertrude in her younger days would have what she would describe as an insatiable thirst for knowledge. Just like any good scientist. I mean, we're a group of people who look at our world and just question why and how about every little thing in it. And it really shows when you look at Gertrude's whole career career as a chemist. After her grandfather's unfortunate death from cancer, she attended Hunter's College in New York City at the very remarkable young age of 15 years old. And no big deal to old Gertie, she graduated soon cum laude in chemistry. However, even as brilliant as Gertrude was, most laboratories wouldn't hire a female chemist because that was man's work. She was, however, allowed to work as a lab assistant which at least allowed her to do some chemistry work, although nowhere near the level that she was clearly capable of. Noticing that her talents were going unutilized, she decided to re-enroll into college, although this time she would go to New York University. When at the same time as earning her master's, she decided to work part-time as a high school substitute teacher. She would never actually go on to earn her doctorate, but she did earn two honorary doctorates, and the woman freaking deserved them, as you'll see. Thanks to the start of World War II, men started being drafted away from the jobs that typically went to them, so it opened up a lot of positions for women. And one of the positions that happened to just open up because of all the men going off and being drafted into the war is one that Gertrude would really, really love. Chemist. Gertrude would eventually meet a man by the name of George Hitchings, and Dr. Hitchings would notice how adept Gertrude was at chemistry. This sparked a partnership of nearly 40 years where Gertrude and her team would develop drugs for leukemia and herpes and AIDS. They also found ways to make kidney transplants less likely to reject foreign tissues in the cases where people weren't actually related. At the end of her life, Gertrude would hold an impressive 45 patents in medicine and was awarded 23 honorary degrees as well as a Nobel Prize in medicine in 1988. Gertrude would never marry, proving once and for all that it's not necessarily true that behind every great woman is a great man. And I think the woman said it best when she said, Don't be afraid of hard work. Nothing worthwhile comes easy. Don't let others discourage you or tell you that you can't do it. In my day, I was told that women didn't go into chemistry. I saw no reason why we couldn't. Danny, I will see you tomorrow.